So now that our material is finished, let's set up an environment to render a portfolio image here in Substance Designer. Now, right before I get started, I just want to show you just a few changes that I made. So here in the nails, uh, I ended up taking my uh, nails here, and then I uh, used a Perlin noise here set to multiply. So if I zoom in close, you can see uh, what this variate how this noise is varying my height. And what this is doing here is just adding some dents uh, when I create the normal map. So here in the normal, if we take a look at the nail, you can see that uh, it just gives it some kind of dents here. Uh, and again, that just kind of helps break things up before it was completely uh, flush and clean. Uh, and adding these dents just helps to add to this kind of worn uh, material look that we're going for. One last thing that I did over here in the dirt uh, was that I have a little section here where I used a blend. Uh, here I took uh, this mass that we have for our knots and I just subtracted it here uh, by the levels that we did uh, that, that we had coming out of our tile sampler that was feeding into our blend. Uh, I just subtracted out the knots from that. So I noticed that on the normal, having the pebbles on top of the knots, it was just creating a lot of noise. So I just subtracted it out just to keep things a little more clean. All right, so here's our completed material. And uh, let's go in now and take a look at setting up a render here. So um, here's what I'm going to do. Uh, we'll just kind of maximize our 3D view here. I'm going to come over to my scene and I'm going to set this here to the rounded cylinder. Uh, so it's going to give me here this rounded cylinder. Now, if we come over here to our environment maps, uh, we can choose uh, any number of environments here. Um, I think what I'm going to do is just use this Corsica Beach. I think I already had that. Uh, can't, couldn't really remember, but uh, just going to use Corsica Beach. And uh, I'm going to use iRay to set up my rendering. So what I'm going to do here in the 3D view is uh, switch my renderer from OpenGL to iRay. And so now here you can see that we're in iRay. All right, and then I'm going to go to the, my materials here and choose Edit. And here I have my uh, scale factor here for my height. So I'm going to set this to a value of, I'm going to try a value of 4. And so here we can see that uh, now my height is displacing the geometry. Uh, it's pretty rough, so I need to tessellate it or subdivide it. So to do that, I'm going to go to Scene and choose Edit. And then here, uh, underneath the cylinder, you'll see that we have this um, subdivision setting and a method. And I'm going to set this to parametric and then set this to a higher value, like say, uh, like a four. And so now what I'll do is, again, just jump back here to uh, my material and then maybe set this to something like maybe 2.5. So uh, yeah, probably not as intense. OK, so now I can use my Shift, Control, and Right Mouse button to uh, just change my lighting angle here, just to make sure that I get uh, you know, a nice kind of light angle here, something that looks kind of nice and dramatic. But also, I'm using this kind of side lighting here, so it brings out a lot of the detail uh, that you know, I spent so much time trying to create here in my height map. Another thing I can do, uh, now that we already have our material parameters here, is I can set this to, uh, let's change our tiling here. I might set this to one point, I don't know, let's try 1.3. Okay, so here we're getting some tiling. Uh, let's do maybe 1.25. Okay, maybe I'll do something like this. And again, just kind of playing around with my light angle. Let's see if I can get some something a little different. Uh, maybe I like this a little better. Let's see. And just experimenting here. Let's go back to our scene and maybe look at uh, my subdivision method. Let's maybe set that to a 6. OK, so again, I'm just kind of playing around with my light angle uh, here. I think I will probably just move this over, get something like this here. OK, so um, now we kind of have everything set up. Uh, let's also take a look at our camera. So now I'm going to go to Camera Edit. Uh, and then here in the camera, I can change things like my focal length. So for example, if I wanted to do kind of like a wide angle shot and then kind of zoom in on the material, I could get uh, something like this, or we could use a little bit of a longer lens and then we'll back out. And then you can see that some of that uh, perspective distortion uh, is, is, goes away. So it just depends on, on what you want to do. So I might try something more like, uh, I don't know, like this, getting closer to like a 50 millimeter lens or so. Uh, that's kind of a bit closer to kind of how our eyes see. Um, so I'm just going to maybe split the difference a little bit, go closer to 41. Whoops, moving the light. All right, so I'll zoom in here. 
Now, another thing that I want to do here is take a look at my window resolution. So right now, uh, use window resolution is enabled, set to true, which means the resolution is based on whatever my window here is. But it, depending on what you want to do for your render, so um, I think what I want to do in this case is I want to do like maybe a 2K by 2K. So I'm going to do 2048 and by 2048. And then for the use window resolution, I'm going to disable this. And now here, uh, it doesn't matter what size I put my uh, window view at. You can see here that it's it's in this square aspect ratio now, uh, rendering it 2K. So now I'll do something more like this. And again, another little light adjustment here. All right, so here's what I have at this stage. Now, another thing I could do uh, just for presentation purposes is I could start to add some depth of field. Uh, so here you have your post effects. And if we enable these here, we could enable post effects. And that's going to give me some things like glare. So here, if I just lower the threshold down, you can see, you know, bam, we're starting to get a lot of glare. Or we could increase our luminance. Um, not really too interested in this. Uh, we'll just set our luminance up a bit. Uh, here you can see we're getting a little bit of bloom, a uh, little bit of kind of glint on, from these nails and so on, but that's all right. Um, another thing here, we have our vignette. So I could, um, you know, just pull a little bit more strength here on that vignette. Uh, uh, we'll come back more to these post effects here in a minute. Uh, but what I want to do is look at more of like a depth of field effect. So uh, here, what I'm going to do, uh, let me just work on my framing here again a little bit. And uh, I'm going to set my aperture diameter. I'm just going to start to increase this. And as I do that, you can see that now we're starting to get some depth of field. And then we can adjust our focal distance. Now, what I like to do here is just I just hold down the Control key and just middle mouse click. And that will set this focal distance for me. So now I'll just start to increase my aperture. And now you can see that we're getting some nice kind of fall off here, uh, you know, on the far sides of our cylinder. And then we're nice and focused here in the middle where I use that control middle click to set that focal distance. Again, this just kind of gives us some nice kind of presentation here. All right. So now that we have that in place, uh, we can scroll down and start to play a little bit with some of maybe some tone mapping here. So again, we can do a, a gamma adjustment. We can increase or decrease our exposure. So here I'm just going to increase my exposure a little bit, maybe pull the gamma down. Uh, I could also come over here into color correction and I could choose to maybe saturate this a little bit more. So here I'm just going to saturate my color value. Maybe uh, I could increase my contrast here, get something like this. Uh, here, why don't we try setting this to make maybe one point, uh, I don't know, let's try 1.2. Oh, that's really high. I'm at 1.025. Maybe something more like 1.01 .01 here. We can also uh, play around with our white balance and stuff, our color temperature. So here we can kind of color grade this by pushing it more to like a cooler tone or maybe even something more towards a warmer tone. So maybe I'll do something like this here. At this stage, uh, that's pretty much what I think I want to do. Again, maybe I'll just play around with that gamma setting here. Again, just kind of lift it a little bit more. And here we go. Uh, we get a nice kind of rendered presentation view here. Uh, that we can use for our portfolio. So once we have all this set up and your render's done, you can just come over here to camera and then just choose save render, or you could choose save render to ArtStation. So if we did this, uh, you can see that you can log into your ArtStation account and then you can upload this as a project directly here from Substance Designer, which is really cool. And I, I actually do that quite often. Uh, so here, we'll just disable that for now. One other thing that uh, I want to mention I haven't talked about yet here uh, is our rendering resolution. So here, let's go back to Scene Edit. You'll notice here in this corner, this is uh, letting us know uh, basically our time and iterations. So right now, our max time in render seconds is set to 60, and that's one minute, so we've pretty much hit that. So that means that uh, iteration-wise, we were only able to get 350 uh, iterations out of 500 samples, so our max samples. So the way this works, Pretty simple. Uh, it's really all about time. So uh, basically, uh, your max time, it's going to run. iRay is going to uh, continue to refine the image until you hit your maximum time or your maximum samples, whichever comes first. So in this case, uh, if I wanted to really make sure that you know I, I, I smooth out any kind of depth of field artifacts, maybe what I'll do is I'll set this to 120 seconds, which is going to be two minutes. 
Uh, however, you, now you can see that uh, iRay is still uh, progressing, refining this, and now our iterations are climbing. We got 418, 437, and it's going to go all the way until either it hits two minutes or 500 samples. And in this case, we're going to hit the 500 samples, but as you'll see, uh, we weren't able to get the full two minutes. So typically what I do is I just set a high sample rate, like maybe 1,000, and then I just let everything, uh, then I just basically set a time and let it just sample until I think, hey, quality looks good enough. So once you have that done, like I said, uh, camera, save the render, or save to ArtStation, and you're good to go. And then that's how you can get some different uh, portfolio images. Uh, you can, once you have everything set up, you can then just quickly just drag and drop in another environment to get uh, a completely different kind of lighting setup. And so it took just a second there for that to kind of kick in, but now we, we get you know something completely different just by simply changing the lighting. So that is going to conclude this series on creating this wood panel material. I hope you enjoyed uh, these videos. Be sure to come back to Substance Academy for more substance training. Thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you next time.